Praise the Lord, folks. Praise God, I'm having a little problem with the camera. I think I did the first uh, few minutes of my session with it on photo instead of video, so that won't work too well. And so, hey, welcome to my house. Uh, I'm, I made my own coffee this morning. I think my wife, uh, sometimes she doesn't sleep as well as I do, and, and she sleeps a little later. And uh, I made some good, fresh community coffee, fed my birds, and uh, the weather is fantastic out there. Good Maryland weather uh, and before the, it gets really bad again. It's amazing how God you know, does this thing. In the summer, we, we pray for the, the warm weather, the summer to get here, and then uh, after a while, we want it to cool off. And so, uh, but, but hey, God has got control of this thing, and uh, it will be cool pretty soon. We'll be, uh, we'll be praying for warm weather again, but it's perfect right now. So, so love this good Maryland mornings. I sh if I didn't have to do this, I could go outside. Well, I could bring my camera out and we just, we just do this little video out here. Praise God. This, I hope you're doing good today. Uh, I am praying for you and believing for you. I just had my own personal little quiet prayer time here all by myself. Uh, those that are here, uh, Jack and Gracie, they're downstairs. Uh, in their house, and and of course my mom, uh, mom's back in the in the back, and uh, but I'm here with the Lord and with you, and so welcome. Uh, I, I I really look forward to these little times um, of uh, talking to you and meeting with you. Decisions have to be made today. Oh, like every day, decisions. Uh, some some decisions are just little decisions, little small decisions. But I I was reminded. Uh, of a saying somebody made, maybe it was John Maxwell or somebody. Uh, it sounds good anyway. Uh, you know, we don't make our decisions based on, um, you, you know, whether it's easy or not. We don't, we don't make decisions because they're popular. You, you, uh, you make decisions because it's the right thing to do. And so uh, if we live our lives with as close as we can with scripture and and we pray and we live the best life. That's, that's the reason we do that, that that is biblical. And so keep the word of the Lord, uh, you know, in your heart, close by. If you can't remember what it says, pick up the Bible uh, and read that. I love that first Psalm. You know, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Amen. Uh, it goes on to say, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. He meditates on that law day and night. Uh, years ago in Sunday school, we had to memorize that whole chapter. Never forget that. And so, so God is good. He's on our side. Uh, he's with us, promised to never leave us. And so just feel like in those decisions and whatever you do or don't do, uh, uh, I, I think you'll, and I pray for you to make the right decision. Praise God. Telephone calls are coming in today. I'm sure I'll have messages when I get off of this uh, to have to recall or, or return. And so we'll do that. But right now, we'll just be with you and, and spend a little bit of hopefully uh, productive, valuable time uh, in the next 15 or 20 minutes. I can't get away from the little uh, minor prophet of Habakkuk. And by the way, when we say minor prophet, it doesn't mean that it has less value than the other prophets. It just simply means in Bible terms, it just means that it's a shorter book. It's just less prophesying or less writing. But but, but it seemed that the, the prophet, he, he understood very well. He had a clear understanding that Israel was in trouble. And of course, what had happened, uh, Israel had backslidden. They had gone into idolatry. You know, that's the human nature. If you don't have church on a regular basis, if you don't have people uh, that uh, around you that pray. In fact, it's a common advice that I give people who pray through to the Holy Ghost, start attending church. Uh, you know, my advice to people often is to get near people who pray, get near and get close to people who worship. Well, the best place to do that is at church uh, because here's what happens. There's even church people all of us at some at, at times we become carnal that means less spiritual we're unconnected disconnected somehow you just have that you have carnality you have humanity uh things just crop up and when we're carnal we see those things we understand and it's so easy to get sidetracked on uh on issues or little situations little if you get two people together you're going to have some disagreement uh different points of view and so all of that is normal and all that's natural. And so what we have to do is get close to folks who pray. 
uh, and let the Spirit lead us and direct us. Guess what? Do you know what the Spirit will do? The Spirit will always focus you away from those issues and those problems and right on the one it's supposed to be on. That's on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what keeps us out of trouble. There is no church in this world uh, that I've ever heard of, and I, you know, I just don't believe it's possible. No church, no church that doesn't have issues of some sort. I don't mean big issues. Pastors, some pastors I know have learned how not to worry about all those little things. It's not that you ignore them and sweep them on the rug, but you just keep first things first. And uh, I've been blessed to have good training and good teaching uh, in my early ministry. And there's folks who's all about the problems, all about the trouble. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we know that they're there. We know that people have, they struggle with things and, and that's okay. And you bring that to the altar and uh but you 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 don't let anything hinder your prayer you don't let anything hinder your worship amen and your decision making uh will will show that and so uh, habakkuk here he he knew that israel was in need they had slipped away from god they back these things don't happen quick normally it seems like it is uh, it does but it doesn't it, it's it's the way we think it's a, you leave out prayer and devotion time you skip church and then after a while, you know, you don't miss it after a while. But the psalmist, psalmist 33 and 12, he said, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you who God chooses. God chooses people who are interested, people who are seeking after God. Uh, talked about seeking uh, uh, just the, the last time we were on here. And, and to seek God is different from accepting God and believing in God. Okay, you make it a point to go after the things of God. You search God out. It becomes a serious matter. Uh, I don't know if I brought it out the last time here, uh, but I remember back in the 60s when we first started feeling the presence of the Lord and getting got old enough to, to, to know that there was a God and, and he was touchable and reachable. And, uh, you know, we just... You know, we, we, we went after God. They had, they had services, whole services. Your Sunday night could have a move of God and people would come to the altar. And so the preacher would call on a, uh, a Monday night and a Tuesday night and sometimes all through the week. It would be a, a seeking service, seeking after God. And, uh, you know, we kind of laugh about that nowadays, but I, I promise you all of that wasn't bad. Because the easy, you know, step one, and that's all you have to do. You don't ever have to even think about it anymore. You're saved because you felt two goosebumps. Uh, it, you know, that's not good either. Uh, it's just too easy, okay? And I don't, I don't believe God's hard to get to, and I don't believe it's hard to receive the Spirit. And none of that, I believe that. But I'm, I, that's one of those little adjustments in my thinking again that, uh, you know, those things that we look back and we kind of smirk and say, wow, they... It, they hurt the faith of the church, and they do. I hate chronic seekers, but the fact uh, that they were there and it happened and I was there, I didn't get the Holy Ghost the first night. It was no, in fact, we can't find except Christ as your personal savior in the Bible. You know, no, that's not a scripture. That's the things, some adjustments we might have to make. Uh, we do find Jesus saying, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We do hear the man with the keys to the kingdom uh, saying, repent and be baptized. He was following Jesus' instruction. Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so, you know, these kind of things, um, you know, that it steps, it, it, it rungs on the ladder to where we are now. We can't just throw that away. That's seeking and pressing and struggling. And like Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. And so... You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 14 and 34, righteousness exalteth the nation, but sin is a reproach to any person, any people. And so righteousness and goodness, rightness is what that really means, uh, is to be aimed at and focused on and, uh, and work toward. You don't just become righteous uh, the moment that you're saved. And, uh, but, but the prophet had a burden here. Thank God for men and women who don't give up easy. You see people in a backslidden condition. Uh, you may not speak that out and rebuke them and go straight to them, but you see that. You see the signs. Uh, there's, there's, there's all kind of signs. We mentioned it, missing church, missing prayer time. Uh, I have people in our church that's never come to Thursday night. I've never been there, never been there. 
uh, obviously it's not very important, okay? Prayer is worth going out of your way. Prayer is one of those decisions that you have to make that's not popular. Uh, it's not that everybody's making the same decision that you're making. It's just right, amen. Pray without ceasing is what Paul said. Uh, and I know that we can't, we got things to do besides just pray, but, but we, we have to make sure that we set that as number one. In fact, he called, the Lord called his house, the house of prayer. We've made it the house of singing, the house of everything else. Uh, but that I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little preachified here today, but in uh, Habakkuk, uh, the second chapter, I believe it is in the fourth verse, watch this. He said, behold, his soul, which is lifted up. And he's speaking about the world. Uh, and, and, and other version says, uh, lifted up with pride, okay, uh, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Now that was just a, that was a, a, a statement on the end of him noticing all the problems and the sins. If you're just, if you're right with God, you shall live by, or you want to be right with God, uh, you lift up God and you, and you, do that by faith. The Jewish, and I don't wear this, maybe it was T.F. Tenney that said this, but the Jewish Talmud uh, says of this verse that Moses gave Israel 631 commandments. Uh, now you know there's more than 10 commandments, okay? There was many, many commandments that, that God gave Moses. Uh, David reduced those commandments to 10. Isaiah to two, and then here's Habakkuk, he brought it right down to one single commandment, the just shall live by faith. Wow, boy, you talk about getting down to the point. Everything's built upon faith. We preach about it, teach about it, have forever. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So we know, we see that it's very, very important. Amen. And in Luke 18 and 8, here's how important it is. When the Son of Man comes, will he find faith? When he gets here, will he find faith on the earth? He's talking about the coming of the Lord, and he's wondering about faith. Notice what he didn't say. He didn't say, uh, will he find holiness? Will he find righteousness? Will he find modesty? Uh, you know, uh, just a whole list of things that he left out here, but of things that are important. They are valuable. We're not, we're not trying to take away the value of any of those things that we preach and teach because they're biblical. But the question was, will he find faith? Why? Because everything else is built on faith. Amen. God, you know, you start out with faith. Faith is the foundation. That's why Peter said, add to your faith. And he gave a list of things that we have to add to. And I've had people say, you can't add anything else to God. That's it. You know, no, that's the, that's the problem. That's what we don't get. You don't start out. When you're born again, you're a baby in Christ. You're, you're a baby in Christ. So there must be some growing and maturing, and uh, it happens in the natural, also happens in the spiritual. Can, can I get an amen, all right? God's people always seem a little bit different, a little bit peculiar, uh, strange. In fact, the Bible says that we are a peculiar people. Uh, we are a called out. We don't, we don't look like everybody else. We don't act like our politics is normally different from everybody else uh, because there's, you know, we just, we're Bible people and we're different. And because uh, like Habakkuk, even though God had revealed total destruction, I mean, I'm gonna, it's just, it's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put them in, you know, prison again. I'm gonna, they, they, I gotta pay. That's a harvest. That's the law of the harvest. Um, you know, uh, as Christians though, if you're talking about living by faith, we can see this, God can reveal it to us. But regardless of the outcome, we have to understand that we just have to keep on worshiping God. We have to keep on doing what is right, okay, regardless of what everybody else is doing. All of society can go downhill and end up in the ditch, okay? But, but our strength will come through our rejoicing. Now, we gotta get that as church people, and I, I know that I embarrass some of our people at church sometimes because we're known as worshiping people, and we do worship good, I'm not knocking that. But I'll just say things in the middle of worship. I, I wish that we'd learn how to worship. I wish we would learn what the psalmist really meant when he said, enter into his gates with thank in his courts with praise, and gates with thanksgiving onto his courts with praise. You know, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And, and that requires 
you know, since we are emotional people, that, that, re that requires some shouting and praising and hand clapping. Uh, but I think that there's people who are waiting on the spirit to move them. And it, 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 you know, you just, you just do that. It doesn't matter what kind of spirit it is. You have to follow your leader. I understand that. You don't want to be a hindrance to the, to the church. But, um, but our strength will come that way, okay? We're made stronger if we learn how to worship. Amen. Listen, the, the truth is this. Whether you win the argument uh, or not, you just learn how to rejoice. And that's something you have to do on purpose. Because if you don't learn that, uh, that you need to do that and you must do that, then issues and situation or the way things turn out will cause your emotions and your feelings to be up or down. We can't have that. Amen. If, if, if you are popular with everybody, everybody agrees with you or not. If you're the on, if you're the low man on the totem pole, the scripture just says rejoice. Okay. If everyone agrees with you, if they don't. Everybody's your buddy. Just rejoice anyway. And that's one of those points that we have to learn. Uh, you know, I, I was uh, I, I was at a church here several years, many years ago. My friend, uh, Brother Tipton up in uh, York, and I, he had a building program going on. And I, I mentioned to him, it was in the middle of the week. I said, Brother Tipton, what are you preaching uh, Sunday? And he says, man, there's no way I'm, I'm getting near the pulpit. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, I got this building program. He said, I got uh, workers, uh, contractors who are not treating me right. And people are not showing up for work when they say they're going to work. And he said, you just, I just, I, you know, it's, I'm frustrated. You know, this is kind of in me. And he said, there's no way I'm going to do the people like that. I'm just not. He said, I'll have somebody else preaching. And I thought, how wise? And I told him so, how wise? He just, you're a wise man to do that. I'm wondering how many men, preachers, uh, they don't know that, but they are frustrated with this and they're dealing with that and they, and they bring that to the pulpit. They, have, they may have a text and a sermon and they preach, uh, but that will come out, that frustration, that anger uh, will come out. I told my son, Pastor Chad, uh, when we started this building program, uh, that very thing. I, I said, uh, Chad, I said, we, we cannot, well, there'll be issues going on. There'll be people that won't treat us right. And there'll be people, things that will happen, uh, decisions we'll have to make. So it'll be on, it'll be in our spirit and in our heart, our mind. And I said, now we, we just, we just have to make the decision right now. We cannot bring that to the pulpit. You can't. And of course it's easy. It seems for, for Chad, because he's just level about most everything. And so, you know, we, we, we can't make decisions based on what's going on and what's actually happening around us. Praise God. Amen. Faith. Amen. Walk by faith. Live by faith. And, uh, you know, faith gives us the ability to see beyond today. And I, I, I wish I had time to teach this, but, but I don't. But, but, but if you do not have faith, if you don't have it, somehow your faith has waned away, all right? Our faith needs to be built up. If you don't have faith, you can only see the misery and the pain of the moment of the or of the day. This is just happening to me today, and I'm angry and I'm upset. And what that does uh, to the lay people, leaders and people in the church, uh, it will ruin, it will kill and destroy your witness because the world can see that expression. They can see... It on your, I can see it on your countenance, uh, and that's why we need to rejoice. And so we began our day with thanking God and blessing God. Uh, here's, and I, I know I wear this out, uh, but here's what Habakkuk said in the third chapter, in the 17th and 18th verses. I've preached about this. I've taught about it. So forgive me if I'm being monotonous here with this and redundant. But I love this, and this is preaches to me. He said, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit be in the vine, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fields shall yield no meat. The flocks uh, shall be cut off uh, from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stall. And now here's what he said. After everything's going wrong, and it's all bad news, nothing really going right here, he said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. It, none of that stuff has anything to do with my worship and my relationship with God. That's what it all comes down to. So I, I don't know about you, but I will rejoice. Amen. There's something good that we can find, uh, you know, in this day. 
And so I believe that if nothing else, listen, God didn't backslide. God didn't lose his faith. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will still heal. He will still bless. And you know what? I've often said this. If I get really, really deathly sick, uh, this is how much I believe that God heals and bless and that he is the same yesterday and today and forever, is that I can be dying of some sickness or some disease. Uh, just because I'm sick and dying, it doesn't mean that God stopped healing. Uh, that doesn't mean that at all, okay? Uh, get me close to somebody. If I'm on a hospital bed or a stretcher, I'll, if I can get my hand on them, I'll pray the prayer of faith that they will be healed. God can do that. But just because we're not getting what we need or what we want uh, when we pray our prayers when we want it, that doesn't mean God's out of the healing blessing business. Praise God. Hey, listen, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, it's a message of faith. Learn, amen, and make those decisions to be loyal, to be faithful, uh, to be honorable. Uh, learn to put your focus on what it should be on. That's going to get you through all of this, okay? Amen. Love every one of you. I want to pray for you again right now. Precious Lord, thank you so much for your word. It is forever settled. Hallelujah. Teach us, train us, help us, God, to learn new things, God. They're not, uh, they're not hidden, Lord, but they're hidden from us. They're out of sight from us. God, you can give us a revelation. You can give us an understanding of things that we think we have an understanding of, but we've missed. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for that. We thank you for blessing all of our people. We thank you for blessing little Bristol today. Amen. And Chad and Melissa and all the rest of our church people, those who are struggling, we pray, God, that you would help them, bless them, lift them up, give them strength through faith in the name of Jesus. And we'll be careful to honor you and give you all of the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen. Great again to be with you. Love you all. Amen. Stay in touch. Praise the Lord.